Have you ever traveled to a place near or far that made you different after having been there? That changed the image of yourself you held so dear but let go of so quickly because where you had been was no longer more important than where you were. Egypt is my such place. I lived there for ten earth-shattering days in 1983. First year of art college. Art history the reason for going. From the moment I stepped from the plane on a warm May night, airport terminal bustling and loud, as if an ant colony had been kicked and we were the ants. Security looked more like military, armed and lethal. Our tour guide asked for ten dollars from each of us to make baggage check more pleasant and timely. The long drive into Alexandria, the smell of salt from the Mediterranean and sand from the Sahara. Dancing partners that have stayed with me. Our first hotel was an old hospital, transformed. Hallways wide, rooms small. A thin ribbon of road prevented us from jumping from our balconies into the moonlit sea foam below. Morning brought heat like no other, piercing and a foot journey through the Egyptian, Roman, and Greek catacombs that tunneled their way beneath the city. At one point, a handful of us broke away from the group and snuck into restricted places, finding ourselves in a cathedral of skulls and bone, over a hundred high. In the days that followed, we wandered through markets and bazaars where prices were to be haggled over and never just paid, where an American dollar was considered one of the greatest bargaining tools. The food on your plate often arrived at your table with flies already feasting or hitching rides on forkfuls destined for your mouth. Public toilets were porcelain holes in the ground with footplates where wrinkled men in long gowns dispensed paper and cloth towels. In Cairo, we traveled to the pyramids, realizing for the first time that they were practically located in the middle of ten million people. And for a fee, you could take a camel to the one position on the plateau where the city disappeared and the desert revealed itself in an optical illusion of sorts placing the giant wonders where they once were, prevailers of their kingdom of glass. Inside, they smell like dust and limestone and urine, chiseled pathways thousands of years old, leading you up into their center, chambers empty, graffiti, ageless. You could buy a burger and a Coke at the base of the Sphinx. Men in tattered jalabias, Wearing hundred-dollar shoes, sell cold drinks, and call taxis as you need them. At night, a light show turns the pyramids into a scene from the Ten Commandments. Epic music blasting, narrator booming. We took a sixteen-hour train ride from Cairo to Luxor. Three-quarters the length of the country. Mountainous dunes. Mud-hut villages passing quickly in the windows. Rich wooden sleeping cabins, soft cotton sheets. Rocked to sleep beneath a night sky bathed with stars like cream on black velvet. The desert has to be experienced to be understood. Sand for as far as the eye can see. Ripped in two by the richest green a flowing river can provide. The Nile miles wide in parts, while hundreds of feet in others. Our hotel in Luxor sat against the shores of the great river. Babies and clothing washed in its murk. We played frisbee with children from the neighborhood. They giggled in wonder as they had never seen a flying disc before. A local tailor in the market opened his shop after hours and had his family sew garments for us as we were eager to part with our money. The dusk call to prayer, echoing out across the delta, haunting nightfall. 
We traveled to the Valley of the Kings, saw mummified fetuses and hieroglyphics from before Christ. We met young women who carved alabaster with stubby fingers. We walked the steps of the Holies of Holy, a grand queen's mortuary carved from the mountainside itself. We grazed our palms along the pillars of Ramses, stood beneath the shadow of Abu Simbel, two temples deconstructed and then rebuilt high above the Aswan Dam that threatened to drown them in 1970. I took hundreds of photos, so such moments would never be lost. The first year of college and exploration into all types of mediums with which to express oneself. For another ten days we also visited Greece and Crete in our travels, but Egypt left the lasting imprint. That permanent change. At the time I owned a wide-brimmed black cowboy hat, and although it made for a very warm protector from the sun, it became a fascination for a young boy who ran the elevator in our last hotel. I wish I could remember his name. I wore it with the brim pushed up in front, you know, like F Troop. He admired it every time I walked on or off his ride. He had a sparkle and a smile that have met few equals, and a love for Westerns never matched. My Egyptian poor, his English the same, yet we somehow communicated just fine. On our last day, I presented him with the hat as a gift, salt stained from me, but he nearly burst with joy. As we boarded our bus back to the airport, the front desk attendant came running out with the hat, boy by the scruff. He assumed it had been stolen. Once the misunderstanding was cleared, I can still see to this day the boy standing there. Black hat on, too big for his head, bright grin from ear to ear, waving his arm as if to lasso a steer. When I got back home, I took at least twenty rolls of film to the processor and waited eagerly. In those days, it took a good week to get them done, if not longer. In the end, none of the photos turned out. I'd borrowed the camera and incorrectly set its exposure, every image barely a hint of itself. I immediately took the time to remember the trip start to finish, playing it over and over and over, to never lose it. But I didn't have to try very hard, as so much of the journey had already been burned into me. To this day, salt and sand still dance. It is truly a special place. It made me more of a person. It's really the only way I can explain it. I went on to specialize in photography my second year. You can understand why. I dropped out near the end of that year, but that's, that's a whole other story. <laughs>